are recording. Okay, well, <clears throat> good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's just very good to see you all, and so glad you can join us. Uh, I'm gonna. My name is Perry Chen. I'm one of the uh, personal counselors with Skyline College Personal Counseling, and uh, I'm doing a presentation today on self-care, and particularly in this time of COVID-19. Um, I've done this workshop a few times in different places, um, and I'm hoping that this, there'll be some new information for all of you, and hopefully you haven't seen it before, um, but it'll be something uh, that you'll be able to take something away from here and, and um, make sure you're able to practice um, some good self-care. This is part of a series called, we're calling Wellness Wednesdays, which is happening every Wednesday uh, from noon to one o'clock. So um, I, would, <laughs> I didn't send out the emails, but if you feel like you want to eat your lunch during this time, you can turn off your cameras and chow down while learning some new stuff. That's quite all right with us. Um, so uh, we definitely have today and then next week, we'll have Dr. Cheng coming in and talk about uh, sort of what's happening with the coronavirus, uh, followed by a few other ones up until May the 13th, when um, right before uh, finals week. Um, <clears throat> but today we're talking about self-care. So let's uh, dive right in. I want to start us off actually with what's called a mindful minute. Uh, a lot of us, um, there's a lot of things happening like out there and out there and over there and over there. And it's, our minds are whirring. There's a lot of things happening. And um, sometimes when we're going into a new activity, sometimes we're still thinking about the previous activity. And so I like to do what's called a mindful minute to help to ground us and bring us into, to prepare us to, for whatever it is that we're transitioning into. So in this minute, what I'll do is I'll have a timer up my phone here. I'll set up a timer. It'll go for one minute of just quiet. And if you want to use that time to just sort of uh, bring awareness to your senses or bring awareness to where, where you are um, or who you are and where, where you're sitting, you can certainly do that. Um, <clears throat> you can use it at the time to, um, to meditate if you have a meditative practice or use this time to pray if, if, if you have a spiritual practice or just a time just to kind of quiet your mind to prepare yourself to talk about self-care and to listen about self-care. So I've got my timer and um, it will make a ding noise. So one minute, here we go. Welcome back. Um, <clears throat> we often don't take even a minute to sort of rest ourselves, reset ourselves. So uh, I like that word exercise. We do this often before our meetings too. So there we go. An overview of what's happening today. Uh, we're going to talk about self-care. Uh, we're going to talk about um, uh, why, what are some reasons why we should practice self-care. Um, and we're going to talk about how to practice some self-care. And I want to share some resources with you as well. So <clears throat> our first exercise, I want you to uh, just tune in and um, check in with how you're feeling right now, just on a scale of one to 10, 10 being really high, one being really low, just tune in and notice, and we're, you know, we're not going to share this or anything, but just notice how you're feeling right now on a scale of one to 10, um, and just take note of that number. There's no right or wrong answer. Just take note of that, of that number. <sighs> this image. Um, when I'm in classrooms, I, I ask the class, oh, have you seen this before? And then every, a few people raise their hands. And it's, uh, it's something that none of us ever want to see. Uh, it is an image of us being uh, very close or almost out of gas. There's no light on this one. I got to change the image. But uh, it's, it's us being out of gas. And we, um, what do we do when this happens? We scramble, we try to get off the freeway or get to the nearest gas station to put in a dollar, five dollars to fill it up to the full to try to get some gas into our, into our cars. Because if we don't, bad things happen. We, um, 
we can't get to where we're trying to get to. We have to uh, call somebody to bring gas to us. It just becomes this whole world of inconvenience. So we try everything we can. We try as hard as we can to avoid this image. Now, I want to ask the question, how many of you, or as it's a self-reflective question, how, how often do you ever feel like not your car is running like this, but you are like this, where you're on empty and you're just trying to, trying to get by? And it's funny because, um, you know, when I asked this in front of big classrooms, a lot of people start nodding their heads like, yeah, that's me, that's me. And um, especially as we're getting closer to finals. Oh, yeah, that's definitely me. And especially with the coronavirus being a shelter place, oh, my goodness, that's me. And we take so much care to make sure this never happens. We try to avoid this at all costs possible <clears throat> for our cars, but uh, we don't always, uh, we, don't, we, don't, we, we don't necessarily strive to do this for ourselves, to take a minute to refuel. Uh, I wanna thank each of you for being here today because this, is, this, is, uh, this shows that you are trying to take some time to refuel and to learn some things about self-care. So I wanna talk about just some common physical signs of stress. Um, Headaches, low energy, and upset stomach, including diarrhea, constipation, nausea, aches, pains, tense muscles, or insomnia. These are just some of the physical signs. Uh, if, you're, if you're noticing some of these within yourself, maybe stress is starting to get to you. This uh, slide is one I want to focus on a little bit more. Um, these are, so this is from the CDC, and these are some, uh, some, um, <clears throat> some symptoms, some things you can see uh, during an infectious disease outbreak. And it can include these things. Fear and worry about your own health and the health of your loved ones. Uh, this could include anxiety, of course, uh, changes in your e eating and sleeping patterns. Uh, we've been seeing quite a lot of this as uh, we've been in shelter in place and um, time is sort of like blended together and we're not sure if it's, uh, you know, what, what day it is or what time it is um, and patterns have been kind of thrown off. Uh, difficulty sleeping or concentrating, uh, the worsening of chronic health problems and maybe an increased use of alcohol, tobacco or other drugs. So, <clears throat> some of you may have seen uh, this movie. This is uh, from a movie for, called The Avengers. Um, uh, for those of you who haven't, just a quick sort of, hopefully, <laughs> spoil a little bit. It's a movie about superheroes. And, um, you know, sometimes the, the reason why I bring this up is, um, you know, we, we go through life and we think, you know what, um, I might be running out empty, but I got this. I can do this. Not a problem. And, um, and then I put this video up. So in this movie, th th there's these superheroes and they have super strength, they can fly, they got this you know, um, high tech suit of armor, control lightning, all kinds of uh, really superhero things. And um, they, uh, they, they, they have this big battle where they uh, save New York and save the world. And then there's this scene after all this. And so uh, I just wanna play this for you all. We won. Oh. All right, hey. All right, good job, guys. Uh, let's just not come in tomorrow. Let's just take a day. You ever tried shawarma? There's a shawarma joint about two blocks from here. I don't know what it is, but I want to try it. We're not finished yet. And it's just this great scene of uh, these guys who are, sorry, who these superheroes who have the incredible powers and just to show that, you know what, <laughs> even they needed a break. Uh, they got tired and they needed to refuel. And so it's just this reminder, like, we need to take time off, even the superhero. Now, of course, Hollywood knows, but even it's supposed to be a funny scene, which it is, but even we need a break. And so some of us might say, but things are so... Ah, right now. And I want to recognize that uh, with the shelter in place uh, policies in effect, this affects us all in very different ways. For some of us, uh, being at home can be something that's actually kind of pleasant. And for some, being at home adds 
a multitude of stresses, uh, whether it's our families or roommates or whatnot, or maybe some of us are at home and we're not, we're alone. There are no roommates. And so we feel very socially isolated or we're with our families, but we're not very connected to them. So we feel socially isolated. It can feel like a lot of different things during this time. Um, so to put the point is that things are so uh, right now. <clears throat> Self-care isn't just important, it's crucial, especially now. It reduces burnout. It reduces the negative effects of stress, those things we talked about uh, up top a little earlier. It can help us to refocus. Uh, many of us, uh, as your students uh, or, or staff, there are things we need to focus on. We, you know, while it's, it can be very, um, there's the draw to want to kind of, kind of crawl up and stay in bed all day. Uh, we need to still get things done. And so taking care of ourselves helps energize us so that we can get things done. Um, this piece here, higher levels of stress correlated with lowered immune response, poor physical health outcomes. Basically what that means is that <clears throat> when we're stressed, we release this chemical card called cortisol. And cortisol is not a bad chemical or bad hormone. It, um, it, it helps us to react and respond to stressful situations. However, when stress is, is uh, chronic, uh, cortisol is sort of being present can actually sort of diminish our immune response. And at this time, you know, we, we kind of want our immune systems to be, you know, in tip top shape. So um, it, this is just a, a, a sort of a strong reminder that it's important to take care of yourself, take care of yourselves uh, in this sort of emotional health way, because that does correlate with your physical health. Same body, you know, people separate them as two different things, but it's the same thing. And then there's this argument, I'm so busy. Well, even though we're stuck at home and, and we don't have places to go, when we have places to go, we just can't go there. Um, some of us may be really, really, really busy. And I, I get that. And I want to I wanna illustrate this, this sort of uh, study. This is interesting. <clears throat> this, these are from graduate psychology students. And um, I'll just, I won't read the whole thing. I'll just highlight Basically, they took these graduate level psychology students, arguably a very, very busy group of people. And uh, they had one group of people sort of practice self-care, um, self-care activities, didn't specify what, just do self-care, something that works for you. And the other group was just, you know, act normal, do, don't do self-care, just do nor normal life. And they found that um, about 80% of those who, uh, uh, who engaged in the self-care activities would actually show better outcomes uh, than the students who didn't. Um, they found that it didn't really matter what kind of self-care things they did, whether it was, I don't know, uh, yoga or, or deep breathing or um, watching a movie or something. It didn't really matter uh, what they did as long as they, they, they sort of did it. Um, and it wasn't that these self-care activities took away their stress. It'd be silly to say that um, Meditation took away my midterm. Like that'd be really, unless your midterm was on meditation, but probably not. So self-care doesn't take away stress. It helps people to adaptively handle the stress, which is great because, you know, stress is gonna, it's a normal part of life. We're gonna have stress, but if we're better able to handle stress, then oh man, we're, you know, we're in good, good shape. So <clears throat> what is self-care? I like to, to say that uh, define it as this deliberate action to take care of our, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> good, I can't infect you guys. Uh, deliberate action to take care of our physical, emotional, and our mental health. And thank you, Google, for this one. The practice of taking an active role in protecting one's own well being and happiness, in particular during periods of stress. Um, I really like these definitions of being active or deliberate, it's intentional. Uh, if I go and watch um, Tiger King, which I haven't seen yet, but people keep talking about it. Um, yeah, I can watch it, but if I'm saying to myself, you know what, I'm gonna watch this, I'm gonna take like you know, whatever the hour episode of it is, and it is my time to sort of like, huh, unwind, relax, distract myself for a little bit, and enjoy something. Get my mind off of, I don't know, my family or my, by my homework or whatever it might be. Intention, very important. There is no one size fits all. Not everybody's gonna enjoy Tiger King or whatever Netflix show that's out there. Uh, not everybody enjoys yoga or mindfulness stuff. Um, it's really whatever works best for you, whatever nourishes you, whatever makes you feel, uh, feel good afterwards, energizes you. I also wanna make this distinction between uh, distraction versus escapism. Um, especially as we're in this age, um, 
streaming, uh, streaming videos or, or Netflix or social media and things via the computer are um, very popular now because that's kind of all we have. Mm -hmm. um, and distracting ourselves is not a bad thing. Sometimes we need a break from uh, reality to uh, let our minds rest and recuperate so that when we come back to the whatever issue we're tackling, we have a fresher mind and we can tackle it in a very different way. You ever find that when you, uh, you have an issue and you go to sleep and the next day you wake up like, oh, oh, I should totally do this and it makes sense. Kind of the same way with distractions. When we distract ourselves, we um, we're able to, to get a, um, to, to sort of increase our brain capacity. Now, that's not a bad thing. However, when we're looking at like, escapism when we're doing like um oh, i'm gonna watch an episode of tiger king oh you know what i'm gonna finish the whole series oh you know i want to watch game of thrones again and 27 hours later you know that that, that might be a different might be a different motivation behind that um where you're trying to escape from reality you want to just avoid reality and that's not healthy because the thing is reality and and the things that were our problems or stressors they they don't go away and so what's important is to get a break from them so we can come back and tackle them, not to just blatantly avoid them because they will not go away and they, will, they need to be worked on. Um, so it's important to, to distinguish between uh, distracting yourself and escaping. Uh, one, distractions are okay. Escaping, it's a whole other set of things, and which it, you know, we don't want to engage in that necessarily because it's just gonna create more uh, stress and more anxiety for us later. So we're gonna do an, a deep breathing exercise. And at this point, usually I like to ask uh, people, um, has anybody ever told you to take a deep breath? Yes, people have said, Perry, just take a breath. Has anybody ever taught me how to take a deep breath? Well, at this point, yes, but uh, at one point it was like, like, no, nobody's ever told me how to take a deep breath. And so what I'd like to do is to <coughs> teach you all um, uh, just some of the things that I've learned about deep breathing. I, I will disclaim I am not a meditation or deep breathing guru. It's just things I picked up along the way and things that seem to be helpful for most people. Uh, before we even begin, I, I want to show you guys, a, let's see if I can get my camera back a little bit more. I want to show you guys the example of a terrible deep breath. Here we go. It doesn't feel very good. Um, my shoulders got all weird and wigged out. It was a very sharp inhale and exhale. It is not relaxing my chest. I tried to puff it out. These are things you should not be doing. So for deep breathing, relax your shoulders. Uh, placing your feet flat and your four on the floor. This is, we call this grounding. Sometimes people cross their legs. It, 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 it's, it's better to really keep your feet flat on the floor. And breathing with your belly, not your shoulders. This is called uh, what people call diaphragmatic breathing. And there's some, there's some science and some research going to this, of uh, uh, it being sort of more effective at, at sort of calming a person. Um, your, your, your lungs aren't up here. Your lungs are kind of, uh, angle my camera down. It's kind of in your back, I think. So, um, you know, when you expand your lungs, it should be your belly coming out. And that's okay. It looks kind of funny, but that's okay. It's actually good breathing. Don't strain yourself. Um, sometimes people think, I should take it. 110% of my lung capacity. Like, no, no, the, the point here is not to strain yourself. The point is to relax and to breathe with intention of uh, relaxing yourself. Um, in a minute, we're going to have this graphic that's going to tell you to inhale and exhale. And um, your lung capacity is different than my lung capacity. So if you can't find yourself following that graphic exact, that's okay. Um, go at your pace. Uh, this is just to help get us into deep breathing. Nose, mouth, both are okay. Um, some people will say one is better than the other. Uh, totally, you know, do whatever works for you. Um, I recognize some people have congestion issues. So, you know, do whatever works for you. Um, <clears throat> again, with this graphic, it's going to inhale and exhale at the exact same amount of time. I actually like to encourage a longer exhale. And the reason with, with that is that exhales are associated with um, uh, engaging the parasympathetic nervous system. And what the parasympathetic nervous system does, it's, uh, that, that lowers your heart rate and calms you. So if you're able to do long, slow exhales, again, not straining yourself, um, I find that that, that that always helps me with my deep breathing. So get yourself comfortable. Feet flat on the floor. And if you want to turn off your cameras, you certainly can. Um, if you want to close your eyes, you can. If you want to keep your eyes open, however you like. But we're going to try some deep breaths together.
One more. All right. <clears throat> Next uh, sort of practice I wanted to, us to give a try is uh, what's called a guided meditation. And again, I am not a, a guru, uh, a guided meditation or meditations at all. Um, but I like to um, to weave these into uh, my therapy when I when I work with students because uh, it's very easy and it's something that anybody could take home with them. It, it, you can find them on YouTube very easily and. Um, Sometimes people find that when doing meditation, they're told, clear your mind and empty your mind and this sort of thing. And it, it's really hard. And you know, I, I personally lose a lot of focus. But when I'm listening to somebody talking and guiding me of how to meditate, there's only two things I need to focus on. One, their voice. And two, my breathing. And it becomes very simple. Yes, thoughts still come in. I'll address those in a second. But I find guided meditation is a very easy way to, um, to, to, to kind of uh, easy self-care practice. So again, we're going to get comfortable. We're going to give this one a shot. This one's a five minute one. It's actually four and a half minutes. We're going to give it a shot. And um, as we're doing this again, if you want to turn off your cameras, you certainly can. If you want to close your eyes, you can. If you want to lie down, that's fine too. Um, however you like. We're going to ground ourselves. So bring ourselves into this present moment. Again, eyes open or closed, it's up to you. And this piece. If you're anything like me, you have, you have a mind that works. And... Um, <clears throat> If somebody tells me, Perry, stop thinking about elephants, stop thinking about elephants, stop thinking about elephants, what are you thinking about? Elephants. So rather than trying to force out thoughts, what I encourage you to do is to gently acknowledge them. Hmm, interesting. I'm thinking about elephants right now. Okay. And then gently let them go. Okay. Uh, I think about elephants, but you know what? For the next four minutes, I'm going to dedicate this time to uh, letting my brain rest and elephants. I'll think about you afterwards. So I'm going to gently gently let you go And another thought will pop in and you do the same thing and there's no judgment. It's okay You are a human being you have an you have an active mind. That's okay um, and uh, it, It's you're not failing meditation or anything like that. We just gently acknowledge and let go of outside thoughts um, it does help also, again, to focus on the person's voice and also on your breathing. That'll kind of help a little bit, but you're not failing. Do not judge yourself. Okay, so get comfortable. This YouTube video is going to load. All right, and here we go. It's now time to take five minutes off. Make sure you are sitting or lying comfortably and that you will not be disturbed. Imagine you're lying in the soft grass of a beautiful meadow. It is very peaceful here, and you've got all the time in the world. Feel the grass around your body and how the sun warms you. Feel how your body rests on the surface. Let go of all tension. Just be here now. Start to notice your breathing. Notice how the air goes in and out of your body as you breathe. Observe which parts of your body rise and fall with your breathing. Feel how good the air is for you. Most of us usually take breathing for granted. But if you're aware of it, you'll notice that every breath is really refreshing for your body. Like drinking fresh, cold water when you're really thirsty. Breathing is precious, like you are, like life is, if we take time to notice. As you lie here in the grass, staring at the blue sky and the drifting clouds, 
There is nothing you have to do. Right now you are at the right place at the right time and it's perfectly okay just to be here. Just to relax. Just to feel your breathing and let go of everything else. Notice your breathing again. Feel how it fills you up with fresh energy as you breathe in. And how old, stressful energy is being washed out of you each time you breathe out. Breathe like this for a while. That is all for now. You can now, at your own pace, slowly return to where you were before this five minute break. I wish you a great day. All right, welcome back. Uh, hopefully that was something nice for you all. Uh, I'd like for us to do another check-in. Uh, we tried to, we talked a little bit about, you know, sort of the whys and uh, did, a, did a few uh, of the, how do I do self-care? And how are you feeling right now on a scale of one to 10? And just noticing, did it go up? Did it stay the same? Did it go down? And not being mad or anything about that, or, or you know, just not, no judgment, just if, if you're just noticing, did things help? Not everybody responds well to deep breathing or meditation. And obviously, hopefully, uh, this was something refreshing and able to sort of bring you up on the scale a little bit more, just a little bit. So, um, ooh, and I forgot to pull this up. So uh, on my, uh, uh, we're gonna do a quick exercise here. I'm just gonna grab this link and load it up. We're gonna do a quick exercise together. Um, this is from the Greater Good in Action. Um, uh, this is a, a, a group out of Berkeley, uh, UC Berkeley, and they do some amazing things. And um, this one's in particular for, uh, it's called Getting Perspective on Negative, um, on negative Events. So I'm gonna share my screen, and let me just minimize that. Okay, and so um, <clears throat> this is an exercise for us to do, and it's a reflective exercise. So um, if you're able to, if you have a notepad, or uh, if you're on your phone or on your computer, if you're able to sort of um, have something readily available for you to sort of take notes on and I'm gonna I'm just gonna read through this and something for we could we could do in the next, for the next five minutes so it's a five minute exercise and you can repeat this exercise anytime you find yourself ruminating this means just sort of chewing on and continually thinking on a negative experience and I think all of us know that sometimes when we just keep repeating the negative experience in our head things don't really get better <laughs> and it just uh, kind of makes us feel worse and worse so Take a few moments to bring to mind a difficult experience you're dealing with, some event in the past that made you sad or angry, for example, or some anxiety or worry you have about the future. This could be uh, coronavirus related, this may not be.
now you have that kind of holding it in your head, I would like for you to try to understand your feelings using you, he or she, and your own name as much as possible. Uh, if your name is Jane, for example, you would ask yourself, why does Jane feel this way? What are the underlying causes and reasons for her feelings? If you begin to see the event in your mind, try to watch through the eyes of a distant third party observer rather than through your own eyes. <clears throat> and the goal here is not to avoid or separate yourself from your feelings, but to analyze them from a clearer and more helpful vantage point. So I'd like to spend the next few minutes, maybe two or three minutes, give you to reflect in this way, to think about this negative event you're, that you have in your head, caught in your head, and to use uh, you or he or she or your own name, a third party sort of thing, um, to uh, reflect and write down your thoughts if you feel inclined to. Uh, this will not be shared, of course. So um, let's take a few moments to, uh, to try this. Another minute and we'll come back. All right. <clears throat> Although it may feel unnatural to talk to yourself in third person, research suggests that it can help you confront difficult feelings without becoming overwhelmed by them. Eventually, you might be able to use this kind of self-talk during difficult events as they're unfolding, uh, such as a stressful task at work or a particularly challenging social situation. Um, like you, I think we could think of a few um, uh, stressful events that are unfolding, uh, you know, that we're living live right now. Uh, okay. And so again, this is from Greater Good in Action, and they do uh, fantastic. There's also, uh, there's a bunch of these exercises, um, and I will share these slides too, but there's a bunch of exercises, and you can also click on why to try, and it'll kind of talk about the research behind it. Um, <clears throat> let me go back to our thing over here. All right. So I want to go over this. This is an article uh, that was written by uh, a psychologist uh, around seven science-based strategies to cope with the coronavirus with, with coronavirus anxiety. And I thought this is a fantastic article and some really practical strategies on dealing with uh, anxieties around the coronavirus. So number one is practicing tolerating uncertainty. And um, what that means is that, uh, well, let me go back a little bit. There, are, in the past, there was this, uh, there was another uh, pandemic on a smaller scale, or it wasn't pandemic, but it was a scare really, uh, it was associated with this H1N1 virus. Um, and with that, uh, a lot of people were getting very scared and they did just research around this. And they found that people who were, um, who uh, had a harder time dealing with uncertainty actually had higher levels of anxiety uh, during this time. So 
So what's the solution here? How do we practice tolerating uncertainty? This is sort of like flexing our muscles and trying to, you know, with the practice. So what does that look like? And what that means is um, inviting uh, small doses of uncertainty into your life, the tolerable doses of uncertainty into your life. For example, if you're going to, I don't know, uh, go for a walk, don't check the weather before you go out. Um, or uh, if you have a question that you need, an, you have a burning question, you need an answer to it, rather than calling your friend or family member or somebody who has the answer, sit with it for a few minutes and see um, sort of what, how, how you can tolerate that. Um, um, Another one would be, uh, for example, uh, if, if you're struggling to like want to know everything there is to know about the coronavirus, and you're constantly checking the news, perhaps limit that. And there's actually a lot of CDC in a lot of places recommending to actually limit the amount of news information you're taking because it doesn't really help. I mean, you, let's stay, we have to stay up to date on things, but um, there is such a thing as sort of excessively taking in that information. Number two, tackling the anxiety paradox. Uh, Carl Jung once said, uh, what you resist persists. Now, <clears throat> earlier I talked about uh, distraction versus escapism, and um, we, dist we distract ourselves to, 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 uh, to go away from, 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 to get away from the things that were, you know, that were, 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 were bothering us so we can come back. Now, um, I wanna make sure, this, this one is, is this piece, we wanna make sure that we don't uh, try to escape it because if we try to escape anxiety, uh, it's there and it'll just keep biting back at us. Uh, let me just check my notes real quick. Um, <coughs> the, 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 the escapism can temporarily help, but we eventually have to get back and tackle it. So uh, make sure you tackle it. Uh, so how do we, how do we uh, tackle this anxiety paradox? It, we try to look at anxiety as a natural part of being human. It is part of, part of our normal range of emotions. Uh, just like anger is not good or bad, it's what we do with it. Same thing with anxiety, it's not good or bad, it just is part of our human experience. And noticing that as part of our human experience um, and being able to accept anxiety in that way. Um, of course, we don't, we don't want to, we don't, we're, not, we're, not, we're, not accepting, we're not accepting the things that make us anxious, but that the fact that we get anxious, that is an acceptable, acceptable response because we're human. Um, <clears throat> A uh, great um, quote or equation I like to think about is uh, pain without suffering, or sorry, pain, yeah, without, sorry, pain, sorry, let me try to start again. Pain without acceptance equals suffering. I'll say it one more time. Pain without acceptance equals suffering. We're going to experience pain, uh, physical, emotional, whatever, pain, it, it happens. But if we don't accept it, that's what kind of leads to suffering. But when we're able to sort of accept pain and say, wow, you know, this, this really stinks and I don't like this, uh, that leads to actually sort of better emotional health outcomes. Number three, <coughs> to transcend existential anxiety. Um, <coughs> the coronavirus and the, the, all the things that are happening right now uh, can very much bring to mind uh, thoughts about our own mortality, uh, ourselves, and also our loved ones. Um, it, it, it triggers these underlying fears of death. And when we're faced with our own mortality, we can get really easily consumed with uh, health anxiety and becoming hyper-focused on the signs of, of illness. Um, you might have noticed I'm coughing right now. I think I'm okay, but, you know, it, 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 uh, if I were if I were uh, caught up in sort of this hyper anxiety, uh, uh, it would drive me to a very different mental health place. And I wouldn't, it wouldn't be great for me. Um, <clears throat> so what do we do? How do we tackle this uh, transcending? This, 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 how do we transcend our existential anxiety? And it is this, is to focus on the sort of the larger, bigger pictures, the whys of life. Why, well, connecting with, reconnecting with your life's purpose uh, and sources of meaning. These could be relationships. These could be spiritual practice or spirituality. This could be a cause. It's sort of taking a larger, bigger picture of why it is that, that you, you wake up every day and do the things that you do. And remembering that can kind of energize you and, and push through uh, these existential anxieties. Number four, do not underestimate human resiliency. Uh, this one's really funny because we as humans are really, 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 really good at, um, at thinking about the worst possible outcomes. <clears throat> and also, we, research also shows that we tend to overestimate how badly we're gonna be affected by a negative event. And we tend to underestimate how well we'll cope with it. Now, um, this is a real thing happening. Coronavirus is, is, is a real thing, and it is a thing that we should be concerned about. Um, but we should also take this rationally and 
um, to, to remind ourselves that we're actually more resilient than we think. That we're, we're, you know, so just rem remind, remind yourself, remember, you are actually more resilient than you think. Do not get sucked into overestimating the threat. <laughs> now, um, <clears throat> we should all be taking reasonable precautions. We should all be doing, uh, we should all be sheltering in place, um, going out for necessity for needs. Uh, and when we are outside to um, practice social distancing, um, <clears throat> we should all be trying to uh, get some sun because that's important. Um, and uh, we'll talk about some other ways to, to take care of ourselves, but let's get to, let's, don't get sucked into overestimating the threat. Um, Research shows that we tend to exaggerate the, uh, the danger of unfamiliar threats. This is kind of an unfamiliar threat for all of us. Uh, and constant media coverage, if you look at any news feed, if you look at any social media feed, um, any, uh, all this coverage can actually contribute towards uh, furthering that sense of danger, which leads to a heightened sense of fear and further escalation of danger. So um, <clears throat> we have to bear in mind, try, try to stay rational about sort of the facts of the coronavirus that um, yes, there are vulnerable populations and there are, um, there, and even people outside of those vulnerable populations, they are dying. This is real. And we also want to understand sort of the reality that many people are actually recovering from it as well. So um, don't get sucked into overestimating the threats. Stay rational and use your, use your minds to uh, understand what the threat really is. Um, <clears throat> to that point next week, I encourage you all to uh, join at the same time to listen to Dr. Cheng uh, talk about uh, sort of the latest on the coronavirus. And also, um, he, he does a Q&A. And I'm back. Hello, everybody. I am not sure what happened there, so apologies. Um, let's see. I am going to share screen and we will continue on. Oops, wrong screen. Here we are. <clears throat> Current slide, flip through. So don't get sucked into overestimating the threat. Uh, stay rational. Um, it, the, people are dying, yes, and people are also recovering. News doesn't necessarily cover that. Strengthen self-care. You guys are here in this workshop so that you can sort of work on self-care and make sure to take, you're taking care of yourself. And of course, number seven, seeking professional help. And I'll, I'll share some resources uh, as we're getting very close to there. I'll share some resources so we know uh, where we can get professional help. Um, I'm looking at the time. I want to keep skipping this every time I get to it because it's time. But um, basically, I want to encourage you all to practice gratitude. Um, <clears throat> There's a lot of science around, uh, and if you want to look at these slides later, there's a lot of science around basically in practicing gratitude, uh, people benefit uh, when struggling with depression, anxiety, and other mental health stuff. So some self-care basics. Make sure you're sleeping enough. Um, eight hours of sleep, typically, depending on age and sort of personal needs. Make sure you're getting enough nutrition, including water. Make sure you're drinking water, staying hydrated. Uh, make sure as much as you can uh, to exercise or get some regular exercise, what that might look like now. It's, you know, yeah, I get creative. And um, make sure you stay connected to people. Just because we're physically distant doesn't mean we have to be emotionally distant. So uh, connection is very, very important. Um, so self-care basics in this time, uh, some things that I found helpful, having structure and routine. Um, you may notice I'm wearing my work clothes. I'm wearing my my work pants as well, um, creating structure and routine. As I mentioned earlier, time, is, time and space are sort of blending because where you go to school and where you go to work and where you live are all in the same place. So creating a structure, uh, creating structures. I have a, a space where I work and, um, uh, and a routine so that you know what to expect. It's trying to create some certainty during these uncertain times. This can really do really well for the mind. This doesn't mean everything has to be structured. So leave some room for, for spontaneity, of course, but creating some kind of structure because all of our structure was thrown out the window about a month ago. So creating some sort of certainties can be very uh, nourishing for you. Tune into yourself. What we did earlier, the one to 10. Notice how you're doing. Notice how you're doing after you talk to your family or your roommates or something. Notice where you are. It's very important uh, because once you notice that, then you can kind of do something about it. Be kind to yourself and to others as well. Uh, during this time, you might make mistakes or little slip-ups that you don't, you don't think would happen, um, and just be kind to yourself. <clears throat> um, 
I, I would encourage you guys, I'm just gonna blow through this slide real quick, to write down something that you commit to doing um, for yourself today. Uh, you can be specific about the time, like this afternoon I will take a walk for 10 minutes, or after this, after this workshop I'm going to um, have a nice bowl of soup, I don't know, um, do something um, to sort of take care of yourself. And uh, you can write it down or just kind of note it in your head. Again, it's about intention, uh, to intentionally say, this is my time to sort, of, uh, to sort of nourish myself and to take care of myself. Got a whole lot of resources over here. The top one, of course, is um, uh, San Mateo Community College District's uh, website on COVID-19, so you get all the latest information there, uh, particularly for students, so you know what's happening with the school. <clears throat> the next four are Active Minds uh, links. Uh, on specific things around uh, stress of living at home or uh, working from home or how to stay emotionally healthy. Um, the next one, uh, that theconversation.com, is those seven uh, strategies that we talked about. Uh, there's a yoga app that I, I'm told is free until July 1st. I think it's the most popular yoga app. I don't do yoga, but um, I was told about this one, so you can get it on iOS or Android. The city of Los Altos and, uh, has put together this wonderful thing of how to keep yourself busy during um, COVID-19. And, you know, you can go virtual mu museum visits or um, uh, you can um, listen to uh, celebrities doing readings. Uh, there's all kinds of fun stuff. Um, SNL, I just saw SNL did a, an episode where they're all doing it from home and um, it was, it was, uh, there's some hits, a couple hits and a lot of misses in that episode, but there's things out there to sort of busy yourself. And, and, um, and it's not just to say about Los Altos, Google it and you'll find lots of things that are available now. Um, you can watch animals, checking out other animals at the zoos. It's, it, I, my wife showed me that yesterday, it was really interesting. Um, <clears throat> last three are really important. The California warm line. This is a number you can call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If you just want somebody to talk to, you can call anonymously and just, just kind of vent and just talk to somebody. Um, I put the website there because it, there's also a, they also have a chat function. So you can just chat with somebody. The crisis lifeline and the text line. Uh, those are, <coughs> excuse me, those are for, uh, sort of more crisis. If you're, if you or somebody you know is, uh, maybe thinking, having some suicidal thoughts, this is somewhere you can call again anonymously to sort of get some support and help either for yourself or a loved one. Or if you don't feel comfortable calling, text, text somebody and they'll get back to you immediately. And then the talk line on the very bottom is one in particular for, uh, people who are parents. These, this is a 24 hours a day, seven days a week run line, um, based out of San Francisco. And they, uh, these are uh, other parents who have been, who volunteer and have been trained to uh, listen and to uh, be supports for other parents who are going through sort of stressful times. So it's a phone number for that, particularly for parents that parents can call if they're feeling stressed. Uh, again, my name is Perry Chen. I'm from uh, Skyline College Personal Counseling, and we are still in business. Uh, we are, uh, we normally operate out of Building 2, and we offer free, confidential, and brief therapy. And um, right now, as we're getting closer and closer to the end of the semester, we're still taking on students, but with the understanding that they're is limited time. So the amount of work that can be done is limited. Uh, and if you are interested, you or somebody you know are interested in appointments, you can certainly um, contact me via my email. It's probably the best. If you call, it'll go to voicemail, but then I'll get that voicemail and I'll call you back or uh, email you, uh, call you back from a block line or email you. So that is still available. And um, as we wrap up, I just want to thank everybody for uh, being here for taking the time to um, want to work on their on, on self-care and um, that this is this is a tough time but it doesn't mean that we have to struggle with it struggle with it by ourselves uh, we're in it together and uh, in that uh, we can be together again the following Wednesdays we have these these wonderful topics uh, what to do about the coronavirus where Dr. Chang will be talking about the latest and also answering lots of your questions um, on the 29th uh, Danielle, one of our speakers, will be talking about healthy relationships and how to maintain them while we're doing shelter in place. And whether that means somebody you're dating with, uh, uh, dating like from afar, you know, it could become a long distance relationship suddenly, or even in the household, how to get along with your parents and things. Um, <clears throat> May 6th, we're going to support, talk about VAR and how we can uh, be kind and be a support with each other using this VAR model. I'm not even going to spoil what it is. And on May 13th, we're going to talk about mood, mind, and body, and how do we maintain our moods uh, during this time? How do we nourish our mood, our mind, and our bodies? And this is, I think, is especially important as we're going into finals after that, and also into summer, which is going to look significantly different than our previous summers. And so how do we maintain our mood, and how do we sort of take care of ourselves? Um, 
I want to thank you all very much. Um, I see in the chat room. Uh, yeah, exactly. If anybody has any questions, uh, certainly feel free to ask. I am available. And um, just thank you so much for being here. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, so I, what I'm gonna do is, uh, thank you for sharing that. What I'm gonna do actually right now is just drop the file into the um, into this chat box and uh, it should pop up and you should be able to just download it. Thank you for, uh, for reminding me. And then um, within it, uh, as long as you can open up a PowerPoint file, we can also use Google Slides, it should work. You should be able to get to all of the, um, the, uh, like the different links and things that I put. <laughs> And the recording, uh, what we're hoping to do is to upload them to the uh, to our health and wellness uh, web page. I think that's the plan. And then uh, from there, we they'll be made available. Similar to um, as you can see on, on uh, the healthy relationship. Oh, sorry, the what to do about the coronavirus. That's part three. Part one and part two are actually on our health and wellness services um, uh, overview page. So uh, we're hoping to up perhaps upload these there. I think that's the plan right now. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, uh, for being here, and hope everybody has a great day. Thank you so much, Perry. Take care. And I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>